I'm planting this raised area with cuttings. Because so I think it's going to be really pretty surrounding the base of the Bocarnia recurvata. So far, I haven't had any problem with frost here because I think the Bocarnia is just enough to protect it. So this is my lower garden. I have a half acre and it's on a steep slope. I sometimes call it my inhospitable half acre because it's very rocky, the soil is poor, it's decomposed granite and clay. I've done a lot of amending. I've lived here for 25 years, I've had a lot of compost that I've added back into the soil. I also use mushroom compost. I mix in things like pumice that help the soil to drain. I designed this new section of the garden that has all the flagstone to be viewed primarily from this location. Before the garden was a bit of a mishmash and I wanted to be able to get good photography from one main location. And so you, you come down the stairs and you enter this, this area that's sheltered by this large oak tree. I can grow just about anything under this, even though I have a somewhat challenging climate. I get near desert heat in the summer and it dips below freezing in the winter. Thanks to the oak tree, I've got a perfect microclimate for succulents. It is a little messy, it drops leaves and I have to keep after them. But not only does it have this multi-layered canopy that, that creates bright shade, it also has this great oak leaf mulch. Decomposing oak leaf. Plants of all kinds just thrive in oak leaf mulch. So if you have an oak tree, it's a tremendous blessing. Uh, it'll provide shade for your plants in the summertime and frost protection in the winter. So as you come into this area, you can see there's a lot of repetition going on here. I have the blue Senecio all along here. And that, that's just sort of a, like a, a river that flows through here. Graptivaria fred ives is one of my favorite succulents. I like how it turns different colors at different times of the year. It's a real chameleon and a real powerhouse in the garden. The dazzlerian over there with long, thin leaves. When you see these, these moving in the wind, it's wonderful. It's like a, a fountain. And at the base are some aloes. It's beautiful when it blooms. And everybody asks about these. Buophony disticta, a kind of bulb with crazy wrinkled curved uh, leaves. And they've yet to bloom. I think maybe they get a little too much shade, but they're interesting just for their fan-shaped curvy wrinkly leaves. My favorite plant for popping into bare spots in the garden is aloe brevifolia. Wherever you put it, it just does really well. It doesn't take over though, but it will form a colony. And over time, you get this lovely fullness and repetition of form. This rock wall was already here. I've added aeoniums. They look really good along the top of it. As you look up the slope, I've also added more aeoniums because they're just so happy underneath the oak tree. You know, one neat thing about Coming here in midwinter is you see things in bloom that you wouldn't see in spring when everything's blasting into bloom. And among them are the cotyledons. So the, this is a, a kind of a rangy, leggy plant that's not beautiful most of the year. Late December, January, you get these spectacular parasol-like flowers. They, they look like ladies' ball gowns. Look at that. The way the hardscape is formed is it's not a perfect line. I wanted curves and S shapes in the garden because it's more natural. This is the succulent sitting area. It's like sitting inside a succulent wreath. It's and like what I really love about it is when you're sitting here, the plants are at eye level. It's the first area that I try to make nice when I have company coming because we're going to be sitting here and we're going to be looking at these plants close up. It's just a real happy coincidence that all of these are facing the viewer because that is the direction of greatest light. And I, I put my more spectacular plants here that you want to see close up, like the large aeonium, aeonium, is it, is it moon glow, or it's the opposite of sunburst. 
because it has more green on it than yellow. Variegated aloes do really well here. They like this bright shade underneath the oak trees, but they don't bloom here. I mean, that's your trade-off. And I grow it for its leaves, not for its flowers, because I know the shade is too deep for it to bloom here. And I don't want it to bloom because it's going to send blooms right into the sitting area and they're going to be in the way. I'd have to clip them off. The, aloe, the regular ar aloe arborescence over here is in full beautiful bloom right now because it's getting more sun. So know your microclimates, understand the orientation of your garden to the sun because it's going to make a big difference in where you position sitting areas, what direction the plants are going to naturally turn toward. You have to allow for that because if they're growing in semi-shade and the, the greatest light is coming from another direction, they're going to lean toward it. So plan for that. Now here we have a little aloe that doesn't seem to mind the, the low light and it's blooming anyway, but it's the exception. This is also a perfect location for echeverias. They're completely protected from direct hot sun that could scorch their leaves. Isn't this spectacular? Three variegates that repeat the same starburst shape, but they're all different plants. So that's, that's a repetition, but it's also interesting because they're, they are different. They're not the same. The plants create your composition over time, too. You know, they, they'll grow maybe higher or wider, or they'll lean more or they'll do things that you didn't expect. They'll weave in and out of other plants if they're, if they're like these, this cute little crassula. You know, this was just a cutting somebody gave Popping me. Popping out here. It's making friends with this giant aeonium. It's also cascading down here, which I love. So that's part of the fun and part of the distressing aspect of gardening is you never know quite what the plants are gonna do and they usually do something that you hadn't anticipated. But when it works, it's usually the most amazingly beautiful thing that you never thought of and you're just taken away by the beauty of it. So I, I'd say that a lot of this area was done by the plants themselves and I can't take credit for it. This, by the way, is the, uh, the color wheel that I did for my craftsy class. I try to keep it with, with the plants that need sun in order to turn orange and yellow and red on the east side where they'll get the most sun because they're going to need that sun in order to color up. Balcarnia recurvata. They're, they're the, the ponytail palm. They're not a palm. I guess you could say they do have a ponytail. But what makes them succulent is not their floppy, strappy leaves, but rather their caudex, this part. Because a succulent, as you know, is any plant that withstands periods of drought by living off of moisture stored in its tissues. Well, that, that is a big water storage tank. And when you look at it, you may not think succulent, but it very much is a succulent. And over time, that caudex will fill that pot. These pots of succulents on the steps are accompanied by a trio of overly large ants. This is Sedum nisbomerianum. You can see that I've given an awful lot of cuttings of this. Wherever I've clipped off the tip, it will branch. My friends think I'm remarkably generous, but I'm actually creating a fuller plant through the act of giving it away. Cuttings stuck into, into a pot. Oscillaria deltoides, Coppertone stonecrop, and Sedum adolfii. This pocket garden over here was designed by a good friend. Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity. Laura specializes in creating jewel box succulent gardens enhanced with rivulets of rocks and pebbles. I especially like how she incorporated a pathway in this one that leads the eye to the arch below. And I have another pocket garden by Laura over here. She beautifully repeated the color of Allocinchotana's flowers and the leaves of golden jade with bits of yellow glass strewn atop white sand. Both pocket gardens were installed about two years ago. I suppose if you asked me what my favorite succulent is in terms of a particular plant in my garden, it would be this 
large Americana. I rescued it as a pup 16 years ago, and now it's huge. A landscaper friend told me, you know, that is going to get so big, it's going to encroach on the pathway, and then you'll have to move it. And I said, well, when that happens, I'll move the pathway. And sure enough, I've had to do that. The caudex of the Bocarnia. It's going to fill in this area, hopefully in my lifetime. And in the meantime, I have this mounded soil around it that I planted with cuttings. This area over here is my cactus garden. And we probably should leave that for another video. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for coming to my garden. Que no es nuestro error Que responda Cupido ante Dios por